Okay, we're ready to get the first game of Veloce versus RCDE Espanol underway. This is another RLCS versus Rival Series matchup. Both the RLCS versus Rival Series matchups have gone in favor of RLCS today. Let's see if um, RCD could be the first to get one to go their way. I think that they've got a really good chance in this one. Um, I did think that NLE and TT, both the, both the Rival Series teams would beat their RLCS counterparts, so and I was wrong about that. So we'll have to wait and see. This should be a really interesting matchup with um, a clash of styles. The Espanol are more of a force your opponents into mistakes kind of team. And Veloce are more of a wait for your opponents to make mistakes kind of team. Now, if you can try to force your opponents to make mistakes while not making any of your own, you have the advantage in this matchup. I think that Rocket League is a game that actually is favored to the team that are more aggressive. So that is why I think Espanol are the favorites here. But Veloce have absolutely got what it takes to get this win. I mean, they are brilliant at what they do. They're the best, actually, at just sitting back and waiting for mistakes. So let's see if um, Espanol can prevent that from happening. Already a double commit from Veloce. They know that they're going to have to play extremely quickly. If they're going to keep up with Espanol here, that's a crossbar from Samwe as he tries to open the scoring. Casio late to this ball. Samwe saw the hesitation. And he puts in the opening goal for Espanyol. Casio just didn't have much boost to play with here. And Samwe can afford to take the risk in that position. Huge upside, obviously, being you might just score. And the worst possible outcome is that he has a 50-50 with two people behind him. That's pretty good judgment of that position, in my opinion. It's going to be very interesting to see how Veloce adapt or don't adapt in this series because very often if things aren't working for them they just try to play the same style but better um, but maybe against Espanyol that won't be possible because these guys you know I said they're the most similar to SRG and how they attack the ball they're not really that similar to SRG and how they defend it in fact I've been more impressed overall this tournament with the Espanyol defense. They've only lost one series. That was a five game series to Mouse, who played very well against them. And that same Mouse team on the weekend, I think it was after or before that, sorry, actually 3 0'd Veloce. So if you look at only their matchups against Mouse as a comparison, then Espanyol actually had the better um, result out of the two teams. And so far, They've looked like the more threatening team. Veloce haven't really been able to do anything in offense. And Espanyol have had several big chances. That's an aerial team pinch. Tox coming in the back post to set this one up. Oh, what a play on the back ball by Tox. He just kept the ball alive. Popped it over the defense. And he easily beats Flame to the next ball. But he didn't waste any time before going for that one. Top corner as he jumps off the back wall to receive his own pass. And Espanyol already taking the game to Veloce. Veloce, they haven't had many mistakes that they've been able to punish so far. Espanyol are rotating beautifully. They are playing very cautiously aggressive stake for the upfield redirect. Look at that as he came off the back wall as well. Goal side save for Veloce, but they're in the, in the final two minutes now. Double demo by Castillo. Maybe that's going to give them an opportunity. Stake spawns at the near post. Doesn't get a touch on it. Infield Castillo to flame, but there's no shot to follow up there. And you know, in that break of rotation that Veloce were able to create, they actually didn't put a shot on target, and that's not good enough. For a team that are all about forcing mistakes from their opponents, well... They had an opportunity there. And meanwhile, talk to the other end of the field. That's just open. Stake makes sure. And Espanyol are ahead by three goals. Huge misplay by Flame, actually. He just popped the ball off the sidewall. 
and Espanyol look like they're playing on another level right now. There was only one real big play of the game for Veloce. The double demo of Casio gave them a chance to hit um, Espanyol before they could recover. But they hit the bar with the first shot and they put the next shot wide. And that's really all that they've had to say in offense. Meanwhile, Espanyol, they've had several opportunities. They've had Veloce on the back foot since the very start of this game. And Veloce look completely outpaced and lost in what to do in this matchup. Espanyol are just too quick and they're too confident with their wall reads and unless Veloce catch them on a downward spiral late in the series I don't see how they're going to win this playing their own style but Veloce have gone the distance many times in the past and had success very difficult team to beat very difficult team to beat multiple times in a row struggling in game one but there's still Plenty more to come. Best of five. The actual. This is actually going to be the last best of five that we see all tournament. Uh, after this, it will all be best of seven in the playoffs. Stake easily clears the center ball from Veloce, and you know, you wonder, is Veloce's play style being exposed here? Is it really the correct way to play? We talked to Freaky earlier in the tournament about their win over Barca and he said that they figure their way to play the game is just better it's just superior to other teams at the moment but since that win they have actually lost twice in our LCS they've gone to game five against Servette struggling in the rival series and now they're down against Espanyol it doesn't look like the most convincing play style for this kind of matchup I mean why would you want to just sit back and let the other team do what they do best attack the ball over and over again and get free hits on it Tox tests Freaky early on that's saved well by Freaky this is you know just one of the other dangers of Veloce's playstyle that if they try to play patiently and wait for Espanyol to mess up Espanyol might just gain confidence because the more that they're allowed to just get free hits on the ball and make the plays they want to make the better they're going to play, the better they're going to feel in this matchup. Now a chance for Veloce to make something happen, but Tox with an easy read in the corner wall for him. Freaky takes stake out of the rotation. This is already a better start for Veloce. They've had some testing hits on the back wall. That's a read that Espanyol missed, which is a rare thing to see. Samway into the middle. Cassio intercepts it! And that's a Big read by Cassio. Let's take another look at from his perspective. He just knew exactly where the ball was going to be played. And you know, Cassio made the big play in the last game, the double demo, to give his team a chance to score. Now he's just scored himself in game two. He seems to be the player that the Loche are looking at to force misplays, if anyone is forcing misplays at all. Flame down the line. 1v1 with Tox, he's denied. The ball stays pretty close to the wall as well. Good speed by Cassio again. He denies stake the counter attack. Sam Way down the line to Tox. He's looking for stake in the middle. His shot will go harmlessly wide of target. And Freaky picks up ball boost and possession as he exits the play. Much better start for Veloce. And still playing very carefully. Trying to watch out for runs off the ball from Espanyol. Samway brings it down. No demo this time for Cassio. A big win on the ball by Tox. He was so much faster than Freaky there. And the crossbar keeps the Veloce goal safe for now. Stake has options down the line. Cassio beats him to it. And it's Cassio who turns this game and this series around for Veloce. Brilliant speed by him. Perfect 50-50 straight into the ceiling and onto Freaky's car and inside two minutes they're 2-0 up you know, they've not had to do too much differently but what Veloce have done in this game is they've let Cassio play with a lot more freedom they've let him exercise his own speed and his own mechanical ability not having to sit back and defend and wait for Espanyol to hit the ball Nice touch into the corner by Flame. Now he's looking to take the ball clear. Shut down immediately by Samway. 
But he's got to be careful doing blind jumps on the ball like this, waiting for the ball to come to him. Might work against some teams, but it's not going to work against Espanyol. You need to go to the ball against these guys, or they're going to beat you to it. Demo by Flame. Actually leaves Samway uncontested. I flick to the backboard. Freaky's in the net. Tox uncontested. What a save, though, by Freaky. He had to run away from the demo and then recover for the goal. But he did well. So far, this is a much better showing from Veloce. They're making plays in this game. They're not just waiting for Espanyol to fail a play of their own. Flame off the bar from close range. Casio is completely uncontested here. He reads the bounce, but so does Stake. Freaky sends it long across the box. And here comes Tox with a big dunk on to Casio. Freaky alone at the back. It's into the middle towards Stake. Great recovery by Flame to take that one away from him. And another great save by Flame. Brilliant defense by Veloce to close out the game. A couple of very clutch plays by Flame there. Earlier we saw Freaky making a huge one of his own. Still some time left in it for Espanyol. That's a huge dunk. It's off the post for Tox. Samway can't read it. Oh my, oh my. Veloce got a bit fortunate there. It was a risky play out of defense. Tox almost got a monster of a dunk on it. Well, he did, but it was off target, I should say. Now Samway, going to look for stake in the middle. Great speed by Flame again. He's still playing a great defensive game to finish this one off. Samway couldn't get up fast enough for that one. It's gone way over his head. And it's 50 seconds left for Espanyol. And Veloce are coming at them. To start off the final minute of the game. Talks into the corner. Casio is waiting for it. They're trying to keep the ball in the corner now. And a rare misread by Samway has allowed Veloce out of their own half again. Veloce just playing keep away at the moment. They know that the job is done if they can avoid giving the ball to Espanyol. It's a much better showing here for Veloce. Both in offense and in defense, they had superior plays to game one significantly, but it might not be over just yet. Talks to the crossbar, and it's gone in. Six seconds left, and Espanyol find a way through. This was a bit of a shambles in defense. Looks like it's gone in off Casio's car, but if Casio didn't touch that, it would have been pushed over the line by Espanyol anyway, so it didn't really matter that he ungoaled it. There's a chance at the end of the game here for Espanyol. They're really going for this one off the ceiling, but I don't think they're going to get a chance at it. It goes to the ground. Veloce hang on late in the game. But you still wonder, are Veloce shooting themselves in the foot sometimes with this kill the time play style? This um, overly defensive posturing, because that's just inviting pressure onto themselves. And at the very end of the game there, they were keeping away quite well. They were letting the clock do the work for them. But that goal at the very end, that's a real warning to Veloce. You know, when they let their guard down, when they stayed defensive at the end, it actually got them in trouble. And I want to see them uh, just going right back to what they did at the start of this game, in the middle of this game, where they were trying to um, keep up with Espanyol. And they were trying to put them under pressure because... That looks a lot better, in my opinion. I think when Veloce come forward and they play with a bit more freedom and they play with a bit more aggression, they look like a far better team. And they're not going to get in trouble in this matchup if they keep that up. Well, we've got at least two games left in this series, maybe three. Every series so far today has been a 3-1 score. Well, this is a very close one so far. Great pass by Freaky Flame. Doesn't get enough on it, and it's just gone wide. Free keep, while shot on target. Stake keeps it out. Casio denied by a couple of players at the near post. And field to Stake. He's hit it high to Tox, who's got options on the other side. Stake, momentary open net there, closed down by Freaky. It's been all playing a good start to the game here. Demo for Flame, should relieve the pressure. He's passed the ball well to Freaky to help him get it out of danger there. That's more like it from Veloce. Freaky trying to move in, but he's beaten to the ball by Samway. Actually, stake downfield here, and that's just in. Samway beats Freaky to the punch, and there is nobody back. 
for Veloce. Cassio just got demoed moments before that, and his recovery afterwards just led him to pre-jump in front of the shot, and it's 1-0 Espanyol already. That's when you thought the Veloce were going to come out on top of these demos and these exchanges in the midfield. Espanyol get one of their own. Mistake. Keeps the ball under control. They're on a two-goal streak here. One in the final few seconds of the last game. And now the opening goal in game three. We get to see now, will Veloce up the aggression? Will they try to make any mechanical plays of their own? That's a great read and great mid-air recovery by Stake. It didn't look like he planned to go up in the air like that. Tox dribbles past two, denied by the third man. Still has a lot of boost to play with though. Infield to Samway. Crossbar to Stake. Actually, Stake doubles it. Oh my days. It was Stake all along. My apologies. I thought Samway was up for this one. But Stake has just gone all the way himself. And how did he get that one in? What a play by Stake. 2-0 Espanyol. And now pressure is back on Veloce. Not gone to the, according to their plan all day today. No question about that. Talks to the flip reset. Looking for the dunk. Can't find it. Stakes waiting on the far side though. Mind game's won. Looking for another mind game. Flame with another good save. Close to the goal. Talks to the open net follow up. And that's in for 3 0 again. Espanyol are making plays on to Veloce. Casio just beaten to the ball here by Tox. And this is turning into the more surprising side of the bracket, perhaps. You've got Veloce and Dignitas over here. You might think, well, that's your semi-final in the upper bracket. Well, maybe not, because first of all, SRG have taken Dignitas out. And now Espanyol are trying to do the same thing in the other matchup. Talks all the way himself here. He didn't even need any help from Samway. 4-0. And the power on that first touch by Tox is just so surprising. The ability to turn that ball around and send it to the backboard from that range shows what a little air roll into the ball can do. Inside the first half of the game, Espanyol are crushing Veloce. And this is the second time this series that they've done it. When you thought 3-0 was impressive, how about 4? Who knows, maybe 5 is on the cards. That's brilliant defense by Tox. He didn't waste any time closing down that ceiling shot. And again, Espanyol is getting in the way of everything here. Tox is boostless in defense, and it's freaky. Finds the bottom corner, and that was desperately needed. So, so necessary for Veloce. Tox actually did have boost, but he just couldn't use it. He was facing the wrong way. And there's still such a huge advantage here for Espanyol. And they've been outpacing Veloce again. You looked at, you know, Castillo's speed, especially in game number two, and you thought maybe Veloce were going to elevate their speed. Maybe they were going to elevate their pace and keep up with Espanyol, but it really hasn't been the case in this one. Tox denies two at the near post. Flame alone. Has to take the ball all the way back into his own half, and Samway is on him. Cuts in field. He's denied in the face of Freaky. A double touch by Stake. Tox has to join him in the corner. It's a double commit from Espanyol. Luckily, they're both landing in different locations. Casio, hard hit into the ceiling. Tox reads it easily. He's got follow-up from Stake, who puts it underneath Freaky. You can see the urgency from Freaky there to get up and over the ball, because he knows that the speed of Espanyol is likely to be a problem. He has to go higher than he really wants to on that play. Another double touch for Espanyol, and another one that Veloce didn't really have an answer to. Luckily, the post had them covered. Talks out into the middle. Flame has to do some cleanup juicy. We've got hardly over a minute left to play, and it's all Espanyol in game number three here. And Freaky has just completely jumped past the ball. Veloce have got no answers. They have got no solution to the Espanyol problem. You know, they've done some decent defending this game. But when you're up against mechanical players, 
fast players that Espanyol have on the field. Good defending's not enough. You need to play outstanding defensively to keep these guys out. Stake fakes it. Tox puts it in for 5-1. I'm going to have to see how much of an intentional mind game this was by Stake because he had everybody on the Veloce lineup looking at him. It looks like he didn't actually mean to miss this. But it's worked out for them. And with 32 seconds left, they're ahead by four again. Not many teams have put five past Veloce. It looks actually like Tox had a controller issue here. I don't think it's going to matter. They should be able to play this one out 2v3 either way. But no, Tox is back in the game. But yeah, with a 5-1 score, even two players of Espanyol can keep it in a winning scenario against Veloce with that time left on the clock. But they look like they're ready to take this series in four. Veloce beaten comfortably in game one. Responded in game two, and now they're beaten comfortably in game number three. And it's up to them now. Are they going to try and make any changes here? I don't expect that they will. Veloce, even when their backs are up against the wall, they, they, they just stick to their guns. They stick to what they know best. And if that's all you ever practice, then can you really blame them for that? But they're being exposed here, or at least their strategy is definitely being exposed by the more confident Espanyol, the more aggressive Espanyol. But you know, there's also the question of individual ability. Are they just getting outmatched by players who are faster than them, who are reading bounces faster than them? Some call it ball chasing. Really, it's just better reads on where the ball is going to be. Pressure on Veloce early on in game four. You can see the danger already as Espanyol players are getting up quickly and getting in the faces of their opponents. That's a great demo by Flame. He's uh, not able to get much on that though as a pinch shot hits the bar. Espanyol are bullying Veloce into their own half. This is something Veloce like to do. They want to control the boost battle. They want to try and starve their opponents. I suppose indirectly forcing a misplay. Espanyol are able to do the same thing and have a lot more threatening chances on goal in the meantime. Good passing by Veloce. That's been one of their saving graces and one of their highlights offensively this series. Back pass from Tox towards Samway. He's going to strike long towards Casio. And Casio doesn't look comfortable here. Samway tries to get it off the wall towards Stake. Veloce are really in trouble here. They don't have a lot of boost. It was one man back Flame, who has been alone quite a lot in the latter half of this series. And he's been quite effective as a solo defender. Samway takes off almost vertically for this one. No reset. Just looked like it was what he was planning to do there. Veloce trying to sneak an opening goal through. Placement wasn't good enough there. But it was definitely away from the goalkeeper. Hawk's going to bring it down and he's perfectly happy making a 50-50 on this play. Stake comes in, saw an opening and now here he comes in the air. Samway's looking for the bump but that's going to be 1-0 Espanyol and the clear as day difference between these two teams is visible for all to see. They're sending all three players forward in offense together and that is why you can't just rely on a perfect rotation to beat them. Goalkeeper taken out of the game by Samway. A state came through with the ball. And we might see another 3-1 score in the upper bracket round one in favor of Espanyol. Big challenge win by Tox. Speed by Freaky. Picked up the free ball though. It's a chance for Flame to do something on the ground. He's found Freaky in field, but the shots are not very testing. One thing to get the ball past the opponents in front of you, but at some point, you have to hit the target if you're Veloce. If you're ever going to come back in this one. Stake. Gives this team another chance to get out of their half. Samway over the halfway line towards Freaky, who hasn't got the best touch on this one. Samway again. Veloce just look like they're trying to hang on here. They're trying to wait for something to happen. A lot of very aimless touches. Just playing keep away and... Hoping more than anything that Espanyol will unnecessarily take themselves out of the game. Espanyol are playing well here. Making very few mistakes and 
Whenever they hit the ball, there seems to be a much more obvious plan involved in terms of where the ball is supposed to be going. Flame brings it down. Good challenge by Espanyol again. Staying away from danger. There's demo avoidance by multiple Espanyol players here, but that's not the best clear. Flame picks it up towards Casio. Stake had to recover quickly there. Let's flame back into the middle. Samway reads his touch. Espanyol have uh, clocked on to Veloce's main offensive strategy here. Trying to get back in this one with demos. Great read by Samway. He's in an awkward position though. Stake to the rescue. With just over a minute left, it's a less convincing win, but still looks like a win for Espanyol. Unless Veloce can do something. Unless they can find some magic. Or unless, perhaps more likely, Espanyol makes something go wrong. And that is going to be a mistake from Espanyol to allow Veloce back into it. Samway panicked behind the ball here. Got an unnecessary touch and Freaky's placement was good enough. 1-1. One, one. And Veloce are just playing their game. And this time, they're making it work. Hasn't looked consistent today, but game four. So far, so good for them. Final minute now. Veloce are seeing a lot of the ball. Now Samway and Saker coming at them. Bumped by Samway. Onto the goalie, but looks like Tox was unwilling to commit on that. His teammates were very slow to recover, of course. Now Tox will come forward. And that's into the middle towards Stake. He's got a dunk because he got his flip here. He doesn't need it. It's going to be a touch to Tox to put the ball over the line. And Espanyol, of course they would retake the lead with aerial dominance. Stake gets it straight up into the air. Recovers for another touch. And Veloce are down again with only 33 seconds left. Freaky wins a 50 with Samway. Tox is alone at the back here. And that is not the best clear. Stake had to come to the rescue again, and he so often has in this last game. And that's actually past him. Tox with a great save at the top corner. Veloce looking for the late equalizer. Everybody's jumped and missed this one. And now it's all up to Freaky to keep the attack alive. 10 seconds left. Flame looks long. Casio demos two. Where's the finish? Casio comes back around for it, but he's denied by Tox, and that should be the game. It is. Espanyol, 3-1 over Veloce. It's another 3-1 on the day. And that confirms all of our upper bracket semi-final matchups we have. Let me just refresh the bracket for you guys so you can see. But we do have two RLCS teams in representation. Then we have RCD, Espanyol, and SRG. That's absolutely crazy. Who would have thought that it would be Singularity and Endpoint representing RLCS in the winner's semi-finals. Who would have thought that Dignitas and Veloce would be playing against each other this Thursday for their tournament life? Oops, I pressed space for a mistake. Look at that, Veloce, Dignitas. Loser of that is out of the tournament. Loser of that is out of the money. And the winner of Sandro Gaming Espanol is guaranteed top three. Just like the winner of Singularity Endpoint is guaranteed top three. That's the money match right here. That is absolutely crazy. So many insane results today. I didn't think that Singularity were going to come out so impressively, or Endpoint for that matter. And um, the only, I think the only game that I predicted correctly today was, our, was Espanyol beating Veloce. That was the only one. I had NLE, TT, Dig Dignitas, Espanyol, and I only got one of them right. <laughs> absolutely wild, but three ones across the board. SRG, the only top seed from my group who make it in unscathed. SRG have just made a huge leap up the table. They were 28th, and they've jumped over 100 points in the standings. Uh, I'll, put, I'll put it on screen for you guys. This is the, this is the, um, the Rocket League ELO rankings. Vitality top, um, NRG second, Space Station Gaming, uh, Dignitas, of course. You know, two of these top four have just lost to SRG in this tournament, which is mad. Like, everybody's RLCS until you get to seven Espanyol RLRS team, by the way. Number seven in the world in the rankings. Ridiculous. Uh, then we've got more RLCS teams, more RLCS, uh, RLCS, 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 RLCS. NLE, who have been making a great run in this tournament as well, are 18th. They're doing very well in the rival series as well. And then Sandro Gaming, number 20. We've also got... Uh, 
Nova Savi Avi, I don't know how to say this, but South American number one in the top 20. But how about that? Sandro Gaiman, without even playing in RLCS or RLRS, making a run into the top 20 in the ratings. That's pretty sick. Okay, we've got an interview post-match with Steak and Tox, so let me pull them into the interview channel and we'll chat to them about that uh, crazy series against Veloce. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey. Hello. So we got Steak and Tox here. Um, now, you guys are actually... Th this was the one result that I did predict correctly today, so thank you guys for uh, making me look, you know, somewhat intelligent. But... Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I expected pretty much what we saw from you today, just really fast offense and, uh, you know, uh, a good enough defense to handle anything that Veloce really try and throw at you. But what, what was your game plan going into this one against Veloce? Uh, either of you can, you know, take this. What do you, what were you expecting? Did you think that you were good, you were going to have a good matchup against them? Well, um, I don't know. I think we just, we just tried to play our game, try to just keep a clean rotation, play as fast as possible, just to beat them to the ball. But to be honest, I don't know, Veloce is obviously a top RLCS team, so we weren't like, com we were confident, but we weren't really like thinking that we we're going to beat them. Is Steak, have you got, is Steak, uh, wait, is he, is he just going to be muted for this? He's I'm here, I'm here, oh, but I'm here? muted because I'm eating. Yeah, but, Steak's, yeah. Steak's eating, uh, but yeah, just feel to uh, jump in whenever you want to, to say anything. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'll do. But, um, so you're into the semifinals now, and that'll be tomorrow against Sandrock Gaming. So that is a pretty hype matchup. Um, I've I've uh, mentioned a few times this tournament that I think you guys have the most similar offense to Sandro Gaming. Uh, you both love to attack uh, the ball and you love to commit all three forward for an attack. You love to get early reads on bounces. Like, are you looking forward to that? Which should be a slugfest of just great uh, offensive Rocket League. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, they're they're very fast, so I think it will be just like the individual like level and it will depend in the day you know maybe like today we're playing very good but maybe tomorrow we don't play that good well we'll have to wait and see but yeah that's going to be second series of the day tomorrow um in the winner's semi-finals if you win that you're guaranteed top three if you lose you'll go down to play against the winner of nle versus triple trouble um i'm sure at this point you're getting bored of playing triple trouble because you keep beating them three two every time you do but um you know looking at the lower bracket are you are you surprised to see Dignitas down there? Like, did you think you were going to be playing against Dig in this semi-final matchup, or you know what were you expecting against in that SRG Dig uh, game earlier? Um, we expected Dignitas to win, but like game five overtime because we know Sandrock is a very good team. Like, a lot of teams like RLCS and RLRS eggle them, I think, but we scream a lot against them, and they are a team that are scary to play against. So I was expecting like a 3-2 to Dignitas or depends on the day. As I said, like in, in this case, it was Sandrock. Yeah, Tox, what's your thoughts on SRG? Stick saying that a lot of our LRS teams ego them and uh, that's not your guys' attitude. Uh, you know, have you have you guys been able to, you know, learn a lot from playing, playing against them? Because, you know, maybe that st attacking style that you have, it looks similar to them because of all the matches you've, you've played against them. Is this... Uh, at all the case in your opinion? I mean, the thing is, like, talking about, like, RLS teams egoing them, I wouldn't, like, the thing is, like, RLCS teams, for example, they won't really scream RLS teams at the start of the season, because obviously they, like, just throughout the season in general, because they won't be able to, like, play against them anyway, so why scrim them? But we like, we like to give them a chance, because we obviously know their potential, and, like, their level at the moment, obviously, because, like, as you can see in the tournament, they're popping off. Yeah, it definitely seems like a good idea. Uh, maybe, maybe other teams need to do like you guys are doing because you're having, you've got the results that other teams want, and uh, you know you're one of the only teams who are going to be practicing against them. Uh, maybe other teams should try and uh, do the same. But yeah, you're you're playing against uh, Sandrock tomorrow. I talked about, uh, I talked to um, uh, Senzo from Sandrock about their expectations of this tourney. He says they're just taking it one game at a time. Um, and you know, looking for the best practice possible. They wanted to play Veloce because they were the RLCS team, but honestly, looking at how this one went, I don't think they're going to be disappointed to play you because you look like the better team today. Uh, but you know, how how are you looking at this tournament now and seeing how well you're doing? How far can Espanol go? Um, I think we're just trying. We're just we're also just going game by game. 
trying to play our best and like just just keep on going throughout the tournament. Obviously, like we, we first of all, like, I didn't even expect us to make it through the playoffs because um, like, we had a really tough group, in my opinion, the hardest group. So I'm mm. actually really proud of my team for making it through, especially like beating Reciprocity three one was one of our biggest, probably one of our biggest like bigger achievements. Oh, yeah, um, and, I don't know. We're just trying to get to the finals, obviously now since we're in the semis. Just trying to keep on winning. Hopefully, it can work out for us. Well, it's going pretty good right now. Stick. Have you got any uh, final thoughts on you know your expectations? About Sandro, you mean? Uh, just in the tournament in general. What what's your you know uh, talk saying that you didn't really think that you're going to make it out of groups? So everything from here is a win. But did you think you were going to make it out of group stage when you saw that lineup? Well, I didn't think so, but I. Like I knew we would like be close to it, but apparently we just played very good and <laughs> get out of that. And getting Beloge, like in my opinion, like maybe the first team or the second, uh, the second best team in the playoffs, was like, well, <laughs> this is gonna be hard again. But I don't know. We just had the mindset that we we are able to do it, so we just I don't know. Yeah, you, and win. you did it. <laughs> yeah, you did it. You keep on doing well against uh, all the top competition, make it out of a group of death, and now pass Veloce into semifinals. Good luck tomorrow in that matchup against Sandro Gaming. I know after seeing you guys play in this one, a lot of people are super excited to see that clash in a best of seven as well. So, um, you know, I'm I'm really excited to see that one, and best of luck to you in that game and the uh, and the, all the other ones that follow. Um, in this tournament as well, because you're you're going to be into week two no matter what. Well, you're going to be into the final week of competition no matter what. There's only going to be uh, loser round one eliminations this week, so that's got to, That's one good thing. We're going to see you next week, regardless. Uh, but yeah, thanks for talking to us after the game, guys. Good luck in the next one. Uh, yeah, we'll see you Thank tomorrow. You. Thank you. See you tomorrow. So yeah, like I said, there. This is going to be. Um, the format moving forwards, so we have tomorrow we have the two um, upper semi-final matchups first. Uh, well, that, that I mean, that's going to be it. We're going to have two series tomorrow, both best of seven, Singularity Endpoint and then Sandrock RCD Espanyol. And then the next day, we'll have two best of sevens in lower round one between NLE Triple Trouble and then Dignitas Veloce to see who gets eliminated uh, this week before we uh, wait for the final week of competition where we'll see Losers round two played on the Tuesday. Then we're going to have uh, winners finals and losers round three played on the uh, Wednesday. And then we're going to have losers finals and grand finals on the Thursday. So just five days left of competition. Finals is best of nine with a one game advantage to the upper bracket team. Correct. If that's all you ever practice, then can you really blame them for that? But they're being exposed here. Or at least their strategy is definitely being exposed by the more confident... Espanol, the more aggressive Espanol. But you know, there's also the question of individual ability. Are they just getting outmatched by players who are faster than them, who are reading bounces faster than them? Some call it ball chasing. Really, it's just better reads on where the ball is going to be. Pressure on Veloce early on in game four. You can see the danger already as Espanol players are getting up quickly and getting in the faces of their opponents. That's a great demo by Flame. He's uh, not able to get much on that though as a pinch shot hits the bar. Espanol are bullying Veloce into their own half. This is something Veloce like to do. They want to control the boost battle. They want to try and starve their opponents. I suppose indirectly forcing a misplay. Espanol are able to do the same thing and have a lot more threatening chances on goal in the meantime. Good passing by Veloce. That's been one of their saving graces and one of their highlights offensively this series. Back pass from Tox towards Samway. He's going to strike long towards Casio. And Casio doesn't look comfortable here. Samway tries to get it off the wall towards Stake. Veloce are really in trouble here. They don't have a lot of boost. It was one man back Flame who has been alone quite a lot in the latter half of this series. And he's been quite effective as a solo defender. Samway takes off almost vertically for this one. No reset. Which looked like it was what he was planning to do there. Veloce trying to sneak an opening goal through. Placement wasn't good enough there. But it was definitely away from the goalkeeper. Talk's going to bring it down and 
He's perfectly happy making a 50-50 on this play. State comes in, saw an opening. And now here he comes in the air. Samway's looking for the bump, but that's going to be 1-0 Espanyol. And the clear as day difference between these two teams is visible for all to see. They're sending all three players forward in offense together. And that is why you can't just rely on a perfect rotation to beat them. Goalkeeper taken out of the game by Samway. Estate came through with the ball. And we might see another 3-1 score in the upper bracket round one in favor of Espanyol. Big challenge win by Tox. Speed by Freaky. Picked up the free ball though. It's a chance for Flame to do something on the ground. He's found Freaky in field, but the shots are not very testing. One thing to get the ball past the opponents in front of you, but at some point you have to hit the target if you're Veloce. If you're ever going to come back in this one. Stake. Gives this team another chance to get out of their half. Samway over the halfway line towards Freaky, who hasn't got the best touch on this one. Samway again. Veloce just look like they're trying to hang on here. They're trying to wait for something to happen. A lot of very aimless touches. Just playing keep away and hoping more than anything that Espanyol will unnecessarily take themselves out of the game. Espanyol are playing well here. They make very few mistakes and whenever they hit the ball there seems to be a much more obvious plan involved in terms of where the ball is supposed to be going. Flame brings it down. Good challenge by Espanyol again. Staying away from danger. Nice demo avoidance by multiple Espanyol players here, but that's not the best clear. Flame picks it up towards Cassio. Stake had to recover quickly there. Let's flame back into the middle. Samway reads his touch. Espanyol have uh, clocked on to Veloce's main offensive strategy here. Trying to get back in this one with demos. Great read by Samway. He's in an awkward position though. Stake to the rescue. With just over a minute left, it's a less convincing win, but still looks like a win for Espanyol. Unless Veloce can do something, unless they can find some magic, or unless, perhaps more likely, Espanyol makes something go wrong, and that is going to be a mistake from Espanyol to allow Veloce back into it. Samway panicked behind the ball here, got an unnecessary touch, and Freaky's placement was good enough. 1-1. And Veloce are just playing their game. And this time, they're making it work. Hasn't looked consistent today, but game four. So far, so good for them. Final minute now. Veloce are seeing a lot of the ball. And now Samway and Sake are coming at them. Bump by Samway. Onto the goalie, but looks like Tox was unwilling to commit on that. His teammates were very slow to recover, of course. Now Tox will come forward. And that's into the middle towards Stake. He's got a dunk because he got his flip here. He doesn't need it. It's going to be a touch to Tox to put the ball over the line. And Espanyol, of course, they would retake the lead with aerial dominance. Stake gets it straight up into the air, recovers for another touch. And Veloce are down again with only 33 seconds left. Freaky wins a 50 with Samway. Tox is alone at the back here. And that is not the best clear. Stake had to come to the rescue again, and he so often has in this last game. And that's actually past him. Tox with a great save at the top corner. Veloce looking for the late equalizer. Everybody's jumped and missed this one. And now it's all up to Freaky to keep the attack alive. 10 seconds left. Flame looks long. Cassio demos two. Where's the finish? Cassio comes back around for it, but he's denied by Tox, and that should be the game. It is. Espanyol, 3-1 over Veloce. It's another 3-1 on the day. And that confirms all of our upper bracket semi-final matchups we have. Let me just refresh the bracket for you guys so you can see.